All right, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. And uh, thanks for uh, uh, Lang Luzzi, who's on tonight with us. I was talking to, uh, before we got started. Uh, just over two years ago, uh, Lane rode our very first win um, that we ever had. So on a, on a horse named Slick William. And uh, Lane, was, Lane was the jockey. And, uh, and it was really, I, I think it was like our fourth or fifth start, too. So it wasn't, it wasn't uh, we had had a couple starts down at Gulfstream with some other horses. And uh, I think this was our first uh, start at uh, in Maryland and uh, um, I th and I, I didn't see uh, I don't see the uh, we were fairly long odds too if I remember correctly <laughs> um, and uh, and so it was a pretty exciting uh, pretty exciting win and uh, it was great to share that with Lane and uh, I, I was showing beforehand I, I actually keep the winner's circle that's the only winner circle picture I have actually up on my wall anymore and uh we actually have too many for me to do i used to have them all up but uh, i would need many many more walls um if i uh if i if i was gonna put them all up these days which is a good problem to have um so lane thanks for coming out tonight uh, uh really great to have you um what what i'll do is uh, uh i'll just it'll be oprah winfrey style here i'm gonna ask you questions you uh feel free to chime in give your thoughts and answers um people on the uh on the i have everyone else muted except for the two of us and uh if anybody has questions you can use the chat function at the bottom uh of it and feel free to shoot those out and i'll and i'll work them in as we go uh as funny as it is your good buddy Jesse Cruz. Ah, there you go. Jesse, give, give me a call here. I'm sure he's got an update for me, but I'll, I'll talk to him afterwards. But uh, thanks for coming out tonight, Lane. Lane, why don't you tell us, you know, um, what made you want to be a jockey? Tell us, tell us a little bit of your personal story on 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 why you wanted to be a jockey. You know, I. It's funny. It's I was always good in school. I was a great athlete and. I grew up across the street from Belmont Park, and that's where my dad works. He's a jockey as well, so the 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 game has just ran in my blood for my whole life. And all I really knew w was horses. After school, after sports, I would go to the racetrack, and th that was that was my life. So I w I was born into it for the most part, and I just always had the itch to to ride horses and and ride races. Hmm. And did was there any point uh, where you, you thought you were going to go on a different career path, or were I mean, knowing that you know it is in your blood, and your and your dad obviously is a is a jock. Was did you ever think about what was what was another career path if it ever crossed your mind that you were going to? do? You know, I like I said, I was so good in school, and I was a real good athlete, and I kind of kept the uh, the jockey dream to to myself for a long time. I, I never told anybody. I was actually attending a private high school, a good school, good uh, college prep school. And, you know, one day it just, uh, everything fell into place. And I felt like, you know, I was dead set on, on wanting to be a jockey. So I told my mom and dad, hey, uh, you know, this is what I want to do. And my dad tried to put me in the right direction and was very supportive. But I often get the question, you know, if you're not a jockey, what what would you be doing? And it's so hard to say because this is this is all I know. This is what I put every ounce of my energy into. But definitely something in the industry, maybe maybe train and maybe a jockey agent, just because I I understand that aspect of the sport. But my heart is uh, being a jockey. Yep, yep, yep. Talk to me uh, a little bit about uh, how you. How your dad did, you, you, you mentioned, you said your dad put you in the right direction. What was that direction? I mean, how did he, how did he point you? What, you know, what's the, what's the starting point here for you? Did you hear me? Where did I lose you? No, you broke up there. You broke oh, up okay. there for a Sorry. second. Yeah, sorry about that. No, what I was asking was, um, you 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 mentioned that your dad pointed you in a direct, it, you know, in the right direction. Specifically, how did he do that? What what impact did your dad have on you 
for your career at this point? You know, a lot of being a jockey is, you know, managing business off the track and on the track, not just, not just riding, having, having to deal with people, having to, to represent yourself in a way where you're likable, where you get opportunities and, and that's just comes with time. You, you can't just show up and, you know, expect to be on all these good horses and it just it, a lot of it is managing your business dealing with your agent de- dealing with trainers and and just being you know instead of just being a jockey be someone who wants to to better a horse to be able to come back and tell the trainer what this horse needs and and with that is a little bit of trust on the owners and trainers ends as well i mean with with you guys i i felt always comfortable and and being able to be honest with you 100%. And with that came good results. Yep, yep. If, if you uh, – talk to me. Give, give us a, a vision of what a day for you is like. You know, today's, today's Thursday, so it's, uh, I, think to, I think it's a dark day for you. So you, you didn't have racing today. But what's, what's a, what was your day like today on a dark day? And then to walk us through what tomorrow's like with the day that you've got races. Right. So like this morning, jockeys, we, we typically work six to seven days a week. So this morning, even though we didn't have any races, I was, I was out dealing with trainers and, and had to Breeze a few horses in the morning. They're ready to to run. And um, typically on a day off, you're you're just on my day off particularly. I just relax. It's it's a really strenuous job, and it's so it's a dark day. There's no races. I still work in the morning, so it's a four seven deal if you're working six to seven days a week. But um, on a race day specifically, especially around here, we uh, we have a lot of night racing. So there's a lot of off time in the afternoons. I use that time to rest up and uh, read the program. Just uh, I'm lucky enough to be very light where I could, I could eat all day. I don't have to uh, lose any weight or reduce. So hmm. for the most part, I just kind of, uh, I like to study the program and, and just get myself ready for uh, the nighttime. Yeah. It's funny. Um, you know, uh, I, I heard you, <laughs> I heard you say that you don't have to worry necessarily so much about your weight. I follow you on social media, and I'm constantly seeing you eat. Um, you may eat more than any jockey I've ever seen. I just have to say that. So, <laughs> you know, I grew up in an Italian family, and my <laughs> mom, she's a, she's a great cook, and uh, when I've been uh, been teaching myself how to cook. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a little hobby I got now, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, you're you're one of the blessed jockeys who actually gets to eat. That's for sure, because most yeah. most of you don't get to eat. So, so you started. Yeah, that's the yeah, truth. Yeah, you started riding on the East Coast. You started your career there, and you moved uh, your tack west. Compare and contrast the two places, you know, the, the places you've been at on the East coast and the places that you've been in, you know, sort of in the Oklahoma, Texas kind of area. You know, it, it's funny. I, I wasn't sure what to expect when I first arrived here only because I'd never been out to this part of the country. And part of my move out West was because I wanted to try somewhere different. I wanted to see what it was like. And, um, for the most part, it, it's just, it, it's completely the same. We, I drove past the racetrack the other day and my dad was down here visiting and uh, he made a joke saying that, you know, looks like any other racetrack. And for the <laughs> most part, that's, that's the truth. You know, it's, uh, it's an oval with uh, left turns for us. So it's, for the most part, it's the same thing. But a lot of, the one part that's real different for me around here is, more tracks are spread out up there in the mid Atlantic region. I could go ride at Delaware park or I could go to Laurel park. Then at night I could go ride Penn national. 
out here, I'm just kind of a little bit secluded from the other spots. So I get more time to focus on where I am. And at this stage where I am right now, it's, it's been effective for my, for my business. Sure, sure. You, you, uh, one of the questions we got from, uh, uh, what is your favorite track? If you, if you, uh, Jenny Brown asked this question, what's your absolute favorite track? And then a follow-up question to that is, where have you never raced that you wish you could race? Good question. Um, you know, I was born and raised in New York and those tracks always hit home to me. That's, you know, where I grew up. That's what I think about when I think horse racing. So I was fortunate enough to be able to spend most of my summers as a kid in Saratoga. So that would definitely be my answer. And I, I actually got to ride a few races there as an apprentice. I rode three races there. And um, it's just something I'll never forget. The crowd, the town itself. If you've never been to Saratoga, the, the whole town centered around racing. You go into a grocery store. You're gonna if you if you go to you know you go downtown you're gonna see you're gonna see horses it's just the nature of the city and that's a great if uh, a track I never rode at that's that's a good question I never really never really thought about that but I uh, I have to say maybe Keeneland just because of the history and you know Lexington Kentucky the the birthplace of most horses. It looks beautiful. Mm. Um, other than that, I've been to Santa Anita, and I would love to ride a race there. <laughs> you might not want to ride right now, but yes. Yeah, right, right, right. Maybe in, maybe in another month or two. Right, right. So if you, um, have, you, have you ridden at all on the West Coast? Have you done any uh, rides on the West Coast at all? Never, never, never rode there. I, I've been there a few times with my dad when he, uh, when he traveled for some big races, but never, never rode races. What's what? Uh, I, this is a question we got from uh, I think it's Deb. What What is your most memorable ride and the best horse you've ever ridden? Um. I think I can answer this question in one go. I rode a horse named Diamond Bachelor in mm. Florida, and he uh, he rode the he ran in the Breeders' Cup as a two year old. He was a he was an entry in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and he he uh, he gave me my first stakes win as an apprentice. And there was a race. It was called it was the Vid Stakes. I won. He uh, this horse hadn't won for two years, but for whatever reason, he just. There was something about him I really liked. Couldn't pinpoint why. Couldn't really even tell you now why. There was just something that gave me the instinct that this horse was going to win on this day. And out of the gates, he, he broke on top. And it was a two-turn race on the turf course. And he just kept going. Made my job easy. And um, I ended up winning another stake on him. And then I finished second at 40-1. to one And the claiming crown jewel which is a two hundred thousand dollar race so to this point definitely uh definitely diamond bachelor have you uh another question from deb which i think is a good question have you ever ridden against your dad i rode against him four times and i am counting i beat him all four times <laughs> i knew that was coming too yeah I I knew the answer to the question, but I uh, <laughs> it up for you anyway. So, um, <laughs> so if um, you know, you're uh, you, talk to me a little bit about um, uh, you, you know we, we I'll tell you this, a story real quick because it just happened to us today. You know, we um, we got spun by a jockey today who we were the first he, – he called us, asked to ride a horse, and then spun us after the after the entries came out because he, he'd prefer to ride for, an, for, for another outfit because um, he thought he had a better – he has a better shot on a different horse, which you guys – you guys are free agents, so let's start there. 
people may not understand that always. It, it, explain to us how an agent works and what your your relationship is to to the owners and the trainers. How what does that relationship look like? You know, this is it's a great question. It's one of the parts of our job that is the toughest. I I'll talk to my agent and we'll come up with, you know, a game plan, what we want to do, which horses we want to ride. Now, for the most part, 99% of the time, I will stay out of that when it comes to wanting to ride a certain horse over the other, particularly just not to get in trouble. I don't, I don't per se go ahead and ask to ride a horse because I don't know if someone else I ride for is going in the same race. And I, I do that for a reason to stay out of trouble. I'll leave that. I'll leave that up to my agent. And, you know, he's, his job is to know what horses are going in which races and, you know, who has which horse. So me, for instance, I stay out of that for, for, uh, for my own sake. Yep. And how do you, how do you get paid? How do you pick an agent? How does that, how does the financial side of, of the business work for you? You know, it, it's funny. It's, there's no contracts with jockeys and agents as funny as that sounds. It's, it's just kind of a handshake. It, it's, you know, do you want to work for me? And all of a sudden that morning you could start working. I've, I've done it. I've done it a few times and, um, you know, I'll, I'll work and I get my percentage of the purse money and then I'll give the agent gets a quarter of what I make. So that's, uh, that's the, the breakdown of the money. Yep. Yep. And, and, and in, in Texas and Oklahoma, uh, the tracks that you, you're the circuit that you're on now, how many, how many jockeys can a single agent have? Um, it, it depends where you are. Some some places are more strict. At, at Remington Park in Oklahoma City, they have two they have two jockeys, which is pretty much normal. They have two two uh, journeyman riders and apprentice. We don't have too many bug boys out here. So most of the agents have two. In, in here in Texas, there's some agents with three jockeys, but for the most part like mine mine is two jockeys and then there's a few that ship in that you know don't have agents that he'll go and help out but his sole per his sole uh focus is on two riders got it got it and how did you pick your agent how, in, in the in the agents you have right now how did you how did you determine who you were going to have as an agent you know what it's it's funny i was looking to make a move and I didn't know where it was kind of wherever I could get an opportunity and I wanted to go someplace. Like I said, I'd never been before. So, you know, I, I had never been to Oklahoma or Texas. So it was, it was kind of a place where if I did get an opportunity, I was going to take it. And I had my agent Bradley White, who I got to say, he's done a great job for me. He's a great agent and he's been a great buddy to me off the track. He, um, he reached out to me through social media and it's amazing how, how far social media has come in the, uh, in the horse racing world. It's almost a need now. So he reached out to me through, through Twitter, I believe, or Instagram or one of those. And he asked me my feelings about coming down here. And that's uh, long story short, two years later, here I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you, um, uh, you know, if you would talk to us, uh, you know, we, we don't, uh, most of, most of our racing, we, we don't race in Texas or Oklahoma right now. What's the season like in that circuit? How, which, which tracks do you, does that circuit run on? And, you know, kind of what's the timing that they, what of the year that they run? You know, a lot of, I do a lot of moving around around here just because of, like I said before, the tracks are so spread out. So right now I'm at, I'm at Sam Houston. We'll we'll run from January to the end of March, and then Lone Star Park in Dallas, Texas, opens up from April to late July. They'll close in late July, and then we'll get ready for the Remington meet, 
which opens up in late September through the rest of the year. So if you think about it right now, I'm in Houston. I'm going to move up to Lone Star Parks four hours from here. And then another three hours away is Remington. So it's a lot of moving around. And one of the downsides to it is there is a lot of off time in between meets. So you're not riding, you're not, you know, you're not taking home a check. My agent's not. So that's one of the downsides of it. But for the most part, it's a really fun place to be. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been really good for your career. I mean, if, if anybody follows Lane, um, pretty much you can count on almost a win a night lately. So, um, <laughs> you know, so that's, uh, that's, I know that helps pay the bills. So, uh, sure. So what do you do? How do you spend your time uh, away from the track? If you know, cause you've got, you, you got three or four days where the, where you're not racing in the evening. Um, what, and, and as you pointed out, if you're not in the mid Atlantic, it's not easy to ride more, you know, day and night. So what's, what do you, what do you do for fun? What's your, what's, what's your usual hobbies? You know, I like to play a lot of golf. That's something I'm starting to do. I, and, and it's a, it's an interesting question. Like I said, we work in the mornings and it's most of the time a 24 seven deal. So I, me personally, I get through work in the morning and I like to leave everything there. There's some jockeys that, that'll bring, you know, the stress of work with them home. I like to have a, a life outside the racetrack. I have, you know, I have friends that, you know, we go hang out, we'll go to the movies, that we'll go play golf, we'll go get just jockeys, just people in the racing industry in general that they'll they'll bring work home with them and it's a stressful job. It's a, it's a tough, it's a tough life. So any way I could get away from the racetrack for, for a little while is healthy for me. Yeah. I, I would think, I would think. Todd, what's the most serious injury you've experienced as a jockey? Knock on wood. I've never had some, uh, anything too, too crazy, but, as an apprentice, I, I broke my collarbone in, in three, four places and had a little bit of a, a shoulder tear. So that would be, you know, the extensive injuries I've had. But for the most part, I've been, knock on wood, very lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. And, and uh, I'm sure you could probably, you're, you're, you've been very lucky. Um, because most jockeys can tell a story about how they broke their back at least once. I mean, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to have a conversation and the jockey doesn't say that they broke, broke their back at least once. So, yeah, and which, which brings up an interesting right. question. You, you, you obviously, as, as, we, as we've already talked, you, you come from a, a family where your dad's a jock. Was, was the, was the, the, the dangerous aspect of the job was it ever a contributing factor with your family trying to push you not to be a jockey you know i i can't say it has in in fact i've I, i've been to the track on days when my dad's got seriously hurt and i've i've been up close and i've seen it all and it's it's kind of made me it got me ready for what i'm doing now in the case and which, you know, if I ever get hurt, I, I know what it's like. I've seen it firsthand. There was a day at Aqueduct when I was a young kid and, you know, the horse flipped over and my dad shattered his pelvis and broke his leg in two. And I'm standing right there watching. And, you know, for, for as much as it is us jockeys, you know, a talent we need to have is to be able to just block out the dangers of it the minute you start thinking of the dangers is the minute you're, you know, you might get beat a nose or a head. And that's something that, you know, not all jockeys have, but it's been, it's something I've been able to block out my whole, my whole life. Yeah. It's interesting. We, we, we have, um, we have a trainer who was a jockey for quite a long time, who, who's one of our trainers, Mark Salvaggio up at Penn. And I've talked to Mark many times and Mark does not even get on a horse. And he talks constantly. Um, if you, if you're with him, 
that if you bring up the topic that he, he, at the very end of his racing, his riding career, he was so scared that he literally could not ride. And uh, he, that's, I mean, that's when he obviously knew it was over for him, but he, mm-hmm. he talks, he talks pretty openly about it that, and, and he's never been on the, the, the day that he ended his professional jockey career. That's the last horse he ever rode. Um, he, mm-hmm. he doesn't even, he doesn't even, you know, get on a, a pony in the morning. He, he literally goes nowhere near uh, riding a horse. Mm-hmm. It, it, if is, you know, which kind of a segue there uh, a little bit with Mark it, it is, and you mentioned earlier is being a trainer in your dreams down the road or what's the, what's the post jockey career and obviously you're still very young so it's 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 probably that's your focus but is is there is there a vision past being a jockey today uh you know in the training aspect it's something that at this stage is is something i really don't want to do because i am a jockey and i understand horses the way i understand them you know, I, I, I have to go out there and be fearless. I don't, I don't think about, you know, what's after this. Uh, for me, it's mostly just the gate to the wire is, is what I live for. And that's the excitement. But, you know, often I think, you know, what is, you know, I'm not going to be young forever. What do I want to do when I'm 50 years old? And um, I wake up and make the PGA tour, but you can dream <laughs> on. <laughs> but, but um, definitely just something in the horse racing and industry. This is, you know, the only thing I know. This is horses, racetracks. That's, it's all me. Yeah. That, yeah. You, you mentioned almost 50 years old. I'm almost 50 years old and I don't know what the hell I want to do. Either. <laughs> um, so don't think <laughs> the 50 is going to help you very much. Right. Exactly. There's a pretty good chance you get to 50 and you still have no idea what you're supposed mm-hmm. to do. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up with one more question for you, Lane. Okay. What, what's, what's, the, what's the, fu- the immediate future hold for you? You're in, you're in, the te- you're in Texas and Oklahoma. What, what's, what's the rest of the year look like for you? You know, it's always up in the air. I'm, I'm, I could get a call tomorrow to go to Dubai, and I have to be open about that. Absolutely. It's, um, you know, I'm young and I'm looking for opportunities, but mostly I just focus on the next race at hand. Hmm. That's how I've gotten most of my success is just one race at a time. When that race is over, there's a next race hmm. and I have to be a hundred percent committed to my owners, my trainers, and I have to be at a hundred percent and have my mindset on that race at that time. Well, you know, Lane. I mean, I, I obviously uh, uh, I have a, a fondness for you. Um, I consider you a friend. I appreciate that. You, you, you know, yeah, you uh, you uh, you've always done well for us, and uh, you're a stand-up, honest, uh, you know, good guy to to be around. And uh, you know, uh, whatever whatever you do, whatever you do, um, I always I'm always happy when our paths cross. So. Uh, mm-hmm. So th- thanks for your time tonight, and uh, you know I'll uh, I'll probably be watching. Uh, I'll be probably picking up a few of your races this weekend. So so good luck on the mounts. Absolutely, thank you, TK. All right, see ya. Take care. Bye.